today's edition of Flyer News, Framingham's robotics team is once again defeating the competition after making it to the VEX World Championship held in Kentucky last year. And with more on the Flyers' success, Brian O'Donnell has a recap of all the winter sports teams, including an exclusive interview with the record-breaking hockey team. Then Luca Dorenzo, Audrey Marshall, Yumi Shapiro, and Emily G sit down with local members of the community who are working to find forever homes for some furry friends. With Framingham seeing little to no snow this year, Flyer News meteorologist Aiden Fernando is back with what we can expect with the winter coming to an end. To wrap up the show, Flyer News takes a look into the recent apartment complexes being built and how it could affect residents of Framingham. All that and more coming up next on Flyer News. Welcome back to Flyer News. I'm Colby Beck, and today is Tuesday, February 11th. And I'm Katie Knox. Here at Framingham High School, our robotics teams have been working tirelessly to get their robots competition ready. They've been hard at work for several months now with hopes of defeating their competition and gaining a spot in the national rounds. Jay Atal sat down with myself and some other members of the robotics team to ask them about their endeavors. Last year, Framingham Robotics made it all the way to the VEX World Championships that was hosted down in Louisville, Kentucky. This year, we're trying to make it just as far. Two teams have already qualified, and one team is currently tweaking and working on their robot in hopes of qualifying for the regional championships. I sat down with a few members of the robotics teams to ask them about their robots and how it feels to be part of Framingham's robotics program. I'm Arjun. I'm a senior here, and I've been doing robotics for uh, all four years I've been at the school. And um, we do VEX robotics, where we uh, our challenge this year is we're stacking a bunch of cubes and we're depositing them in corners of our field and we're putting them in little towers. So for every cube in the zone, it counts as one point. But the value of each cube increases by one for every cube of that cube's color placed in a tower. My favorite part of Felt Robotics is being able to design your own robots that you can compete in competition your own way. It's not any structured way that you're told. You can compete however you feel is necessary to accomplish the goal in competition. My favorite part of robotics is just working with my friends and building and designing a robot and going through the design process. It's just been really fun to work together as a team and work through all uh, of our problems that come up with the robot and bounce ideas off of each other and it's just a really supportive, really fun environment and I've had a lot of great times and memories with my teammates. Um, the season's getting better so uh, we started off with uh, a work in progress but in our last competition we placed seventh and we got to the semifinals so we're definitely on an upward swing so we'll see what happens. It's been a lot of fun so far and just a little more, you know, a little more work to go. Uh, something that's really cool the robot is um, our tray here. So this goes forward and pushes the entire uh, stack of cubes forward. And uh, the gear ratio on it's really cool. It's uh, 1 to 21. So I like how the, the designing of the robot came together. My main role on the team is to scout, meaning I go into the competitions and I look for the robots that we think maybe our team would like to pair up with, be teammates with, and teams that we kind of dislike and we don't really want to be teammates with them, whether it's their robot doesn't really work with ours on the field or their robot is just not competition ready and that we feel. Um, there are also other goals for scouting, such as if we're in a match and we're competing against other robots, it's a good idea to know what those robots do to be prepared for the match and we can gain an upper hand over the other team by knowing what they can do before they know what we can do. I'm the social media manager of the Robotics Club. Basically what I do is I talk to other teams, I take pictures and videos, and make sure to upload them to Instagram and tweet about how our matches are going. Um, I make alliances, so we basically get other teams to choose us or we choose other teams so that way we get to finals. Our club has been uh, helping out at uh, Fuller Middle School. Uh, they've started their robotics program recently and we've been going over every Thursday to help 
uh, start them with the journey of robotics and it's a really fun time because we get to give back and also learn a lot from their creativity and stuff. In addition to the Fuller thing that we're doing, we're also, we've been uh, showing up to the Walsh Robotics Competitions at Walsh Middle School and uh, we always go there to help set up the field and take it down for middle school events. We go volunteer for different roles such as being the announcer, helping with passing out awards, helping queue up teams, helping be pit admin. There's a lot of roles that we need volunteers for in not only the middle school competitions but the high school ones too, that if we have teammates here who do not have anything going on at the time are glad to help out with any local competition that needs volunteers. And also follow us at Framingham underscore robotics. For Flyer News, my name is Jay Tall. Let's send it right back to the desk. Thanks, Jay. Being part of the robotics team myself is always such a fun time because there's so much to learn and a lot of great people to meet. In other news around school, the winter teams here at FHS are on a roll with both boys swim and dive and girls gymnastics becoming Bay State champions. The boys hockey team is currently fourth in the state and the girls basketball team is getting ready for playoffs after more than 10 years of not making it that far. Brian O'Donnell has everything you need to know about Framingham sports in this week's edition of Sports Update. What's up and welcome back to Sports Update. I'm your host, Brian O'Donnell. Our winter teams are wrapping up their seasons with some of them preparing for the playoffs. So we'll talk about that and more. So let's get right into it. For boys hockey, they suffered a tough loss to arch rival Natick on Saturday night at William Chase Arena in Natick. Senior goalie Jake Handy continues to dominate in net, always giving the Flyers a chance to get the win. With the loss, the Flyers fall to 12-4-2 on the season. Their next game is tomorrow night on the road in Hingham at 6 o'clock. And now we have an exclusive interview with head coach Will Ortiz and captains Will Trisquita and Jared Schimmelin. Yeah, you know, um, I think our guys are starting off well. You know, we're, uh, we have a good record right now. We're finishing up uh, our last league game against um, arch rival Natick this coming Saturday. Um, we're excited uh, about the opportunity that we have in front of us. Uh, it's been going great. I mean, uh, our record shows that uh, you've... Uh, Get out what you put in. Boys have been working hard all season and uh, we're still looking forward to a good stretch coming up. Well, I think the expectation is that we're always going to compete and we want to compete with the best. Um, you know, I, when I took over uh, four years ago, I said I wanted to be the best and so we're going to play the best. And at this point, we've proven that we can compete at the highest level. Um, so I think the kids know and the coaches know that the expectation is that we want to be in consideration for the Super 8 year in, year out. Uh, just going hard and uh, working hard in practice every day, staying focused, uh, head down. We uh, can never get complacent. We are always taking it one day at a time. I mean, we've always wanted to bring home a state title. Uh, back when I was in eighth grade, they were at the Garden, and that was the coolest thing ever. I mean, we're hoping to make it there. Uh, we know what we got. We trust everything that uh, the coaches are telling us to do, and we're just, we know that uh, if we perform at our best, we'll get the best results. You know, of course it says something, um, you know, but at the end of the day, that ranking means nothing. Um, if we're taking care of our business, doing what we need to do, um, everything else will take care of itself. Uh, I mean, there's always expectation. We have high expectations for ourselves. Our coaches hold us accountable, and uh, we're just trying to stay focused. And obviously, it means it means something, but we're just trying to win the last game of the season. Uh, no added pressure. I mean, we're definitely honored, but that's not what we're looking for right now. It's uh, after midway through March that we want to be known as the top team in the state. Um, you know, I say it day in and day out, um, you know, having a group of seniors that uh, can, can hold our younger kids accountable, um, they understand um, the effort and the work ethic that needs to be put in and, and, and for the whole thing to work as a unit. So um, our seniors have done a great job leading by example. That's on and off the ice. Um, I couldn't be more proud than my seniors. The boys basketball, they took on Holliston in the front gym Sunday afternoon. They fell by a final score of 55 to 50. The boys have been struggling as of late, dropping their last five games. Unfortunately, this losing streak came at the wrong point during the season and they won't be able to return to the playoffs. The team plays their final home game tonight at 6.30 in the front gym against Brookline. It is also senior night. Congrats to Sam Whiting, Jack Corsi, Luke Spring, Jack Harmon, and James Allen on all your success with Framingham basketball. Flyer Gymnastics is base day conference champions. After finishing the regular season a perfect 8-0, the Flyers headed into the base date meet poised to take home a title, which would be their first since 2005. 
They did just that. The Flyers won the Bay State meet, winning with a final score of 143.75. A perfect season ends the right way. Champions. 2020 Bay State Conference Gymnastic Team Champion with a score of 143.75 points for Senior Sarah Anastasi was also awarded Bay State Conference Gymnast of the Year. Congrats to the entire team on a historic season. Girls basketball fell on Friday night to Natick 57-45. The Flyer freshmen continued to lead the team despite the result from the Natick game. Selena Monestime and Katie Regan both had 17 points in the loss. Flyers are 7-10 on the season after their loss to Methuen on Sunday. They have their senior game this Friday against Weymouth at 6.30 in the front gym, so congrats to Chloe Pierce and Vienna Monestime on their time with Flyer basketball. Boys Swim and Dive came in third place in the South Sectional Tournament on Sunday afternoon. The boys had a terrific season led by seniors Chan Sien and Leon Kissler. They were just another team this winter season with a lot of success here at Framingham. Wrestling went 1-1 one one over their weekend with the tournament against St. John's Prep and Mansfield. They defeated Mansfield after some big performances by the guys. They have their final meet against Natick tomorrow and will host a D1 sectional on Saturday in the front gym. For track and field, junior Sophie Albright continues to break records not just in the Bay State, but throughout the country. With her record high jump of five feet, eight inches this season, that puts her in first place in the state and fourth in the entire U.S. Albright took the Bay State title for high jump this past week after a jump of five feet, four inches. Congrats to Sophie on your accomplishments, and we look forward to you breaking more records next season. That's all for this week's edition of Sports Update. For Flower News, I'm Brian O'Donnell. Let's send it back to the desk. For the past couple of years, the Framingham School District has been struggling to maintain a consistent fleet of buses to get students from home to school. With a national shortage of bus drivers, Framingham is trying to find new and innovative ways to make their busing system more efficient. One of the ways the district was going to make the buses more efficient was by having an app that would allow parents to track their child's bus and be informed of delays and problems. However, Lincoln Lynch, Executive Director of Finance and Operations for the Framingham Public Schools, stated that although we planned to do a soft rollout on Monday, February 3rd to Brophy Elementary School parents, I am delaying this rollout since the process has been slower than expected, largely as a result of two separate technologies needing to work together in order to provide accurate information. Lynch also went on to say that these delays are to be expected as with any new technology and that the new rollout date is set to be in early March this year. Parents are eagerly awaiting the availability of this app because Framingham's buses are notoriously late or uncovered as a result of the bus driver shortage. Executive Director Lynch also stated that despite the shortage, Durham School Services, our transportation vendor, has worked to recruit, hire, and retain additional drivers. Hopefully with this new app and Framingham's close communication with the transportation vendor, students will be able to get to and from school on time every day. Flyer News has been reporting on the construction of the new Fuller Middle School building since the project was announced back in 2018. Now after two years, Framingham residents are finally starting to see the progress that the construction workers have been making. As of recently, some of the framework for the new Fuller building has been put up, and city residents are relieved to be seeing some visible progress after many months of seeing just a large plot of exca excavated dirt in the place of where the new Fuller building will soon be. From an update posted on the Framingham Public Schools website, the construction team has completed placing footings of the, of the building and are now working to place walls and waterproof and backfill the building's foundations. Looking ahead, masonry work will start up in mid-February, which is in the very near future. The current Fuller Middle School was built back in 1958 and has not had a major renovation since its construction more than 60 years ago. And the lack of building maintenance is what led to the dire need of a new Fuller building. The Massachusetts School Building Authority approved $39.5 million for the new Fuller building, and construction is hoping to be completed by winter of 2021. According to a recent National Pet Owners Survey, there are approximately 95.6 million cats living in households in the United States, with over 68% of households owning at least one pet. Yet even with the vast number of cats living comfortably with their families, there are still over 70 million stray animals still in search of homes. One local cat shelter is hoping to make a difference no matter how small, to help our furry friends find their forever homes. Flyer News correspondents Luca Dorenzo, Yumi Shapiro, Audrey Marshall, and Emily G sat down with two founding members of the local cat shelter, Stray Pets in Need, to ask them about their work. 
My name is Sue Webb, and I'm the Executive Director for Stray Pets in Need. And I'm Julia Neff, I'm the Vice President of Stray Pets in Need. SPIN is short for Stray Pets in Need, and SPIN looks at rescuing animals from local animal control officers as our first priority. And then as we have space, we take in um, owner surrenders. We also take in if we've adopted some cats in the past and something's happened to the family and they can't keep it, we'll always take our pets back again so we can make sure they get readopted. Our mission is provide healthy relationships between humans and pets. We do that by helping people um, like low-income families. We've helped with low-cost spay neuter and occasionally we help animals besides dogs and cats. We've had some parakeets and the most recent adventure was with a Muscovy duck, Stanley. And he's back in the water doing great. <laughs> Big thing people want to do is direct care. They want to have hands-on with the animals. So we have our transition shelter um, where people come in three times a day and help to feed and clean the, and then let the cats out of the cages. They're playing with them, socializing them, getting them ready so they can go up for adoption at our adoption center at Kitty City Adoption Center at Pet World in Natick. There are other ways to help. We need help with fundraising and so we'll have some events and people can help with the planning of the event. We are 100% nonprofit shelter. No one gets paid. It's all volunteer staff pretty much so. We volunteer our time, our volunteers, there's so many opportunities, social media, just word of mouth advertising, anything that can help us get these animals adopted. So when people volunteer to do direct care, they first come and do an orientation to see where the facility is, how what needs to be done, where supplies are. The spin transition house where the cats are socialized, taken care of. It's literally in Natick on Route 9 next to California Closets, which is literally two miles from Framingham. Not very far at all. And it's really close to Pet World in Natick, which generously donates our shelter where they get adopted out of. I'm a volunteer. I started as a volunteer with my children, and I was always just a dog person, never had cats. and. You make a change, you make a difference, you know, you can see online how people are like, oh I saw this animal needs help and they feel like they can't do anything, help us. You volunteer a couple hours a week. Knowing that you made the difference in getting an animal adopted out, finding them a home, for them being homeless, it's, that's the feeling, that's, you're doing something, you actually made a difference. And I, I think when the volunteers help out, they get something back. They're giving to the community and they're getting something back. Some of the volunteers who've worked with some of the cats can see them come out of their shell and blossom and then they feel great when they hear about the adoption. We have other people who can't commit to doing the direct care, but they're doing all the behind the scenes stuff that needs to be done. We have our adoption center at Kitty City Adoption Center at Pet World and so all the donations that are dropped off there, all the dirty laundry from the adoption center has to come back to the transition house. SPIN was created back in 1991. We got incorporated, uh, got a 501c3 and all that. And it started because my work as animal control officer, um, I wanted to make sure animals had a chance to get adopted and weren't euthanized and there was a puppy that had a broken leg that uh, none of the other shelters had room or resources to take care of. So Rufus was who we started off with, getting a few friends to sign on to be on the board of directors. And he, he was raised money, treated, and he was adopted and lived a long life. Um, but that was the start of SPIN. Um, so we've been around since 1991. Go on our website, uh, straypetsinneed.info, um, and do an application that way. They could stop by Kitty City at Pet World and pick up an application there to fill out. Um, they can email straypetsinneedofmass, M-A-S-S, at gmail.com. Um, Facebook so. message, Instagram. 
just let us know that you're interested. I think <laughs> if we were to come back like next week and then like record a segment. New England is notorious for its cold winters and blizzards, but so far in the 2019-2020 winter season, we've seen very little snow and temperatures have yet to stay below freezing for more than a few days. Back in December, Framingham Public Schools had two snow days, but despite the snow coming down this past week, we still had school. That's attributed to Framingham's devoted public works crews, who stay up night and day to keep the roads safe for traveling. Flyer News meteorologist Aiden Fernando is outside, where it's been raining all day. What's going on out there, Aiden? Thanks, Katie. As you guys can see, it's currently raining here outside FHS. It's been in this pattern for the past couple of weeks where, you know, we get some snow, then it goes back to the rain. Just because of the temperatures not getting below freezing, we're getting this rain and then snow and rain and snow. And it's been like this all year. We only had two snow days back in the beginning of December. And as a senior, I really love some snow days. This week, we're supposed to be around in the mid 40s to the low 30s. It's going to be raining and cloudy all day. All right, so let's look at the five day forecast here. As you can see, today, Tuesday, it's going to continue with the rain. We're going to be around those mid-40s. Tomorrow, we're going to be partially cloudy, around the same temperature. And then as we hit Thursday, we might see some sun, probably not. It's going to be the same thing as uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. But then Friday hits, and it's going to really drop in the temperatures. We're going to be around with a low 3 and a high of 28. Wind chill is going to get up to around the mid-teens. We'll be a little colder and maybe some snow. The weather this year is similar to last year, around the same time. We were stuck in this pattern last year, never got any snow. This year, the same thing. But then again, last year in March, the snow really started hitting. And uh, this year, it could be the same. So as a senior, we're hoping for snow in March to late February because those snow days means no school. And uh, for those of you who do enjoy skiing or snowboarding, you guys can definitely look forward to the start of next week. It will be in the mid-40s, which is perfect skiing temperature. Not too cold, not too hot. And you will expect some snow. As you can see, the snow in that temperature is going to be great. It's going to be nice and light. Won't be sticking, won't be ice. Perfect conditions. Go shred it up out there. That's all for this week's weather, guys. We can send it back to Katie and Colby at the desk. Thanks, Aiden. Hopefully, we will see more snow in our future. In other news, Framingham has recently seen an influx of new apartment buildings. These new multi-story apartment complexes seem to rise out of the ground right before our eyes. Such rapid city growth is concerning many city residents who fear that too many new developments may cause more problems for Framingham's school system and traffic conditions. Flyer News producer and director Megan Sidmore and Aiden Fernando got the opportunity to sit down with the city councilor Janet Lembruno and school committee member Novel Alexander to get their take on the new apartments and what Framingham's government should be doing to address people's concerns. Over the past few years, Framingham has seen an influx of new developments. After the town became a city back in 2017, the rapid development is even more prominent. The apartment complexes are sure to bring more people and economy, but at what price? That's the question many city residents are asking, but there are very few answers. We sat down with Janet Liam Bruno, a member of the city council, to ask her about the new developments here in Framingham. There was basically a ban on apartments for 40 plus years um, that had started way back. And I think that unfortunately we kind of missed the boat with a lot of other communities that were able to build some apartments um, but the fact that we had built none, and then when the ban basically was lifted, it just seems like it just basically took the cork off the bottle, and it was just, you couldn't really kind of stop it. Some have proposed a moratorium on the apartments, which means a temporary pause on approving new developments. We would just give all of us some time to just say, oh, wait a minute, let's figure out how this is going to work, and then when we come out of it, you know, we, we have some kind of um, plan, and, and we can change that plan as we go, but at least we have something. One of the main concerns is the lack of planning that has been given to the new developments. Many people in the city are concerned that the new apartments will cause traffic congestion and overcrowded schools. We don't have any planning on traffic. We didn't study the impact on traffic. Um, we didn't, I mean, just even the, you know, being green is Framingham. Um, you know, we were behind so many other communities in, you know, uh, where we are in our, in our solar and energy. Um, and that's something that we've not even discussed. The problem is, is that we have so many going in and we have not had any conversation. To your question is, do we have a solution? Um, we don't have any idea of the impact that it's going to have on the schools. We were told, you know, one apart, you know, five kids from this building or, you know, very random numbers. While there are many concerns about the new apartments, they do bring young people, business, and are increasing the value of Framingham's properties. 
We spoke to the project manager of the Mount Wait construction site, and he expressed that the developers of the apartments are aware of the people's concerns and hope to address them. The developers of the property are based on development. You know, they're really looking at developing a, a piece of a neighborhood. They're really looking at this like a holistic thing. It's just a small development, but it, it's going to be nice, and they want it to be nice, mm -hmm. and they want the neighborhood to like it. And they're beautiful, but again, the you know, they're, they're a high rent, and I just hope that we can fill all of these apartments because if we can't, we're going to have another whole huge problem. A, a temporary moratorium is definitely needed now or as soon as possible. I'm, I'm hoping to see that some kind of ordinance or a proposal within the first six months of the new term for the city council, and, and hopefully the mayor will agree to that, that temporary moratorium. That's the time that the real big work needs to be done because that's, that's how you're going to try to figure out how this is all going to play out in the future. Framingham is a fast-growing city, and we can only expect to see many more apartments in the future as the city continues to grow. While the city government has yet to make any concrete plans as to how to address the implications of rapid residential growth, they are actively working towards a solution. These multi-million dollar projects are bringing life back to Framingham, but simply need more attention from the government. Reporting for Flyer News, this has been Megan Sidmore and Aidan Fernando. With over 2,500 students at FHS and many organizations to fit each student's interests, keeping up with Framingham High School can be a challenge. No More Leva has the info on all of these organizations and what else is happening around school on Homeroom Headlines. Good morning, FHS, and welcome back to Homer Medlines. I'm your host, Nomar Leva. There's a PM collab tomorrow. Girls Tennis is having an informational meeting for spring season today right after school in E105. Anyone who is interested in trying out should come out. That's all for today's edition of Homer Medlines. Now let's take back to Katie and Colby at the desk. That's all for today's episode of Flyer News. You can watch this episode again on channels 8 Comcast, 15 RCN, and 41 Verizon Fios at 5 and 7 o'clock. And if that still isn't enough Flyer News, you can follow Flyer News on Twitter at underscore FEC TV and on Instagram at Flyer underscore News. You can also stream to watch this and other broadcasts under the FEC TV tab of the school's website. For Flyer News, I'm Colby Beck. And I'm Katie Knox. Have a great day, FHS.